The indigenous Aryans theory, also known as the Out of India theory OIT, proposes that the Indo-European languages, or at least the Indo-Aryan languages, originated within the Indian subcontinent, as an alternative to the established migration model which proposes the Pontic steppe as the area of origin of the Indo-European languages. The indigenous view sees the Indo-Aryan languages as having a deep history in the Indian subcontinent, and being the carriers of the Indus Valley Civilization. This view proposes an older date than is generally accepted for the Vedic period, which is generally considered to follow the decline of Harappan culture. It includes arguments against the Indo-Aryan migration theory, and arguments to redate the Vedas and the presence of the Vedic people in accordance with traditional, Vedic Puranic datings. The idea of indigenous Aryans also implies a migration out of India to Europe and Central Asia. This is contrary to the mainstream scholarly view, saying that the Indo-Aryan languages originated outside India. The proposal has been entwined with political and religious arguments, since it is based on traditional and religious views on Indian history and its identity. There has also been resistance among some Indian scholars to the idea that Indian culture can be divided between external Indo-European and indigenous Dravidian elements, a division which is sometimes described as a legacy of colonial rule and a hindrance to Indian national unity. The debate mostly exists among the scholars of Hindu religion and the history and archaeology of India, whereas historical linguists nearly unanimously accept the migration model of Indic origins. Topic: <laughs> Historical background. The standard view on the origins of the Indo-Aryans is the Indo-Aryan migration theory, which states that they entered northwestern India at about 1500 BCE. An alternative view is the idea that the Aryans are indigenous to India, which challenges the standard view. In recent times the indigenous position has come to the foreground of the public debate. <inaudible> <inaudible> Indo-Aryan migration theory The Indo-Aryan migration theory posits the introduction of Indo-Aryan languages into South Asia through migrations of Indo-European speaking people from the Pontic steppes via Central Asia into the Levant Mitanni, South Asia, and Inner Asia It is part of the Kurgan hypothesis, revised steppe theory, which further describes the spread of Indo-European languages into Western Europe via migrations of Indo-European speaking people. Historical linguistics provides the main basis for the theory, analyzing the development and changes of languages, and establishing relations between the various Indo-European languages, and the time frame wherein these languages developed. It also provides information about shared words, and the corresponding area of the origin of Indo-European, and the specific vocabulary which is to be ascribed to specific regions. The linguistic analyses and data are supplemented with archaeological data and anthropological arguments, which together provide a coherent model that is widely accepted. In the model, the Yamna culture is the Urheimat of the Indo Europeans, east of which emerged the Sintashta culture, BC, from which developed the Andronovo culture. 1800 to 1400 BC. Andronovo culture interacted with the BMAC BC and, out of this interaction, developed the Indo-Iranians, which split into the Indo-Aryan and the Iranian branches around 1800 BC. The Indo-Aryans migrated to the Levant, northern India, and possibly Inner Asia. The migration into northern India was not necessarily a large-scale immigration, but may have consisted of small groups, possibly of ethnically and genetically heterogeneous composition, who introduced their language and social system into the new territory. These are then emulated by larger groups of people, which become absorbed in the new language group. Witzel also notes that small-scale semi-annual transhumance movements between the Indus Plains and the Afghan and Baluchi highlands continue to this day. Topic. Aryan invasion theory The so-called Aryan invasion theory is an outdated variant on this model. In the 1850s, Max Muller introduced the notion of two Aryan races, a Western and an Eastern one, who migrated from the Caucasus into Europe and India respectively. Muller dichotomized the two groups, ascribing greater prominence and value to the Western branch. Nevertheless, this Eastern branch of the Aryan race was more powerful than the indigenous Eastern natives, who were easy to conquer. By the 1880s, his ideas had been hijacked 
by racist ethnologists. For example, as an exponent of race science, colonial administrator Herbert Hope Risley (1851–1911) used the ratio of the width of a nose to its height to divide Indian people into Aryan and Dravidian races, as well as seven castes. The idea of an Aryan invasion was fueled after the discovery of the Indus Valley Civilization, also called Harappan Civilization. The Indus Valley Civilization underwent decline at around the same period during which the Indo-Aryan migration occurred. This led to the idea that this migration was actually an aggressive invasion which caused the decline of the Harappan civilization. This argument was developed by the mid-20th century archaeologist Mortimer Wheeler, who interpreted the presence of many unburied corpses found in the top levels of Mohenjo-Daro as the victims of conquests. He famously stated that the Vedic god, Indra stands accused. Of the destruction of the Indus civilization, scholarly critics have since argued that Wheeler misinterpreted the evidence he found, and that the skeletons were better explained as hasty interments, not victims of a massacre. The theory has been discarded in mainstream scholarship since the 1980s, and replaced by much more sophisticated models. Nevertheless, critics of the Indo-Aryan migration theory use it to present the Indo-Aryan migration theory as a variant of Aryan invasion theory. According to Witzel, the invasion model was criticized by indigenous Aryanists for its racist and colonialist undertones. The theory of an immigration of Ia speaking Arya, Aryan invasion, is simply seen as a means of British policy to justify their own intrusion into India and their subsequent colonial rule. In both cases, a white race was seen as subduing the local darker colored population. While according to Conrad Elst, a supporter of indigenous Aryans, the theory of which we are about to discuss the linguistic evidence, is widely known as the Aryan invasion theory. 8. I will retain this term even though some scholars object to it, preferring the term immigration. 2. Invasion, North India's linguistic landscape leaves open only two possible explanations, either Indo-Aryan was native, or it was imported in an invasion. Topic. Indigenous Aryanism. The indigenous position started to take shape after the discovery of the Harappan civilization, which predates the Vedas. According to this alternative view, the Aryans are indigenous to India, the Indus civilization is the Vedic civilization, the Vedas are older than the 2nd millennium BCE, there is no difference between the northern Indo-European part and the southern Dravidian part, and the Indo-European languages radiated out from a homeland in India into their present locations. These ideas are based on the Puranas, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, which contain lists of kings and genealogies, which are used for the traditional chronology of India's ancient history. Indigenists follow a Puranic agenda, emphasizing that these lists go back to the 4th millennium BCE. Megasthenes, the Greek ambassador to the Maurya court at Patna at ca. 300 BCE, reported to have heard of a traditional list of 153 kings that covered 6,042 years, beyond the traditional beginning of the Kaliyuga at 3102 BCE. The royal lists are based on bardic traditions, and are derived from lists which were orally transmitted and constantly reshaped by the Suda bards. These lists are supplemented with astronomical interpretations, which are also used to reach an earlier dating for the RG Veda. Along with this comes a redating of historical personages and events, in which the Buddha is dated to 1700 BCE or even 3139 BCE, and Chandragupta Maurya c. 300 BCE is replaced by Chandragupta, the Gupta king. Else notes that In August 1995, a gathering of 43 historians and archaeologists from South Indian universities at the initiative of Prof. K. M. Rao, Dr. N. Mahalingam and Dr. S. D. Kulkarni passed a resolution fixing the date of the Bharata War at 3139-38 BC and declaring this date to be the true sheet anchor of Indian chronology. The Vedic foundation gives a chronology of ancient India Bharata, which starts in 3228 BCE with the dissension of Bhagwan Krishna. The Mahabharata war is dated at 3139 BCE, while various dynasties are dated more than a millennium earlier, Gautama Buddha is dated at 1894-1814 BCE, and Jagadguru Shankaracharya at 509-477 BCE. These ideas provide a continuous chronology of India, in contrast to the discontinuity between the Harappan and Vedic period. 
T he Indian civilization must be viewed as an unbroken tradition that goes back to the earliest period of the Sindhu Sarasvati or Indus tradition 7000 or 8000 BC The idea of indigenous Aryanism fits into traditional Hindu ideas about their religion namely that it has timeless origins with the Vedic Aryans inhabiting India since ancient times The Vedic foundation states the history of Bharatvarsh which is now called India is the description of the timeless glory of the divine dignitaries who not only graced the soils of India with their presence and divine intelligence, but they also showed and revealed the true path of peace, happiness and the divine enlightenment for the souls of the world that still is the guideline for the true lovers of God who desire to taste the sweetness of his divine love in an intimate style. <laughs> Indigenous scenarios Topic. Indigenous Aryans scenarios Michael Witzel identifies three major types of indigenous Aryans scenarios 1. A. Mild version that insists on the indigeneity of the Rigvedic Aryans to the northwestern region of the Indian subcontinent in the tradition of Aurobindo and Dayananda. 2. The out of India School that posits India as the Proto-Indo-European homeland, originally proposed in the 18th century, revived by the Hindutva sympathizer Konrad Elst and further popularized within Hindu nationalism by Srikant Talajari 2000. 3. The position that all the world's languages and civilizations derive from India, represented e.g. by David Frawley. Kazanis adds a fourth scenario. 4. The Aryans entered the Indus Valley before 4500 BC and got integrated with the Harappans, or might have been the Harappans. Topic. Main arguments of the indigenists The idea of indigenous Aryans is supported with specific interpretations of archaeological, genetic, and linguistic data, and on literary interpretations of the Rigveda. Standard arguments, both in support of the indigenous Aryans theory, and in opposition the mainstream Indo-Aryan migration theory, are questioning the IAMT, presenting the Indo-Aryan migration theory as an Indo-Aryan invasion theory, questioning the methodology of linguistics, reinterpretation of the linguistic data, arguing for the ancient, indigenous origins of Sanskrit, pointing to the supposed lack of genetic and archaeological evidence to support such an invasion into northwest India, contesting the possibility that small groups can change culture and languages in a major way, re-dating India's chronology, re-establishing the Vedic Puranic chronology, dating the Rigveda and the Vedic people to the 3rd millennium BC or earlier, identifying the Sarasvati River with the Gagar Hakra River, which dried up c. 2000 BC, Identifying the Vedic people with the Harappan civilization Equating the Harappan civilization, Vedic culture and the Vedic Puranic chronology Topic. Aurobindo's Aryan person For Aurobindo, an Aryan was not a person who belonged to a particular race, but a person who accepted a particular type of self-culture, of inward and outward practice, of ideality, of aspiration." He wanted to revive India's strength by reviving the Aryan strength and character. Aurobindo denied the historicity of a racial division in India between Aryan invaders and a native dark-skinned population. Nevertheless, he did accept two kinds of culture in ancient India, namely the Aryan culture of northern and central India and Afghanistan, and the un-Aryan culture of the east, south and west. Thus, he accepted the division of European historians between two types of cultural configurations. Topic. The emerging out of India model The out of India theory OIT, also known as the Indian or Heimat theory, is the proposition that the Indo-European language family originated in northern India and spread to the remainder of the Indo-European region through a series of migrations. It implies that the people of the Harappan civilization were linguistically Indo-Aryans. Theoretical overview 
Konrad Elst, in his update in the Aryan invasion debate, investigates the developing arguments concerning the Aryan invasion theory. Elst notes, Personally, I don't think that either theory, of Aryan invasion and of Aryan indigenousness, can claim to have been proven by prevalent standards of proof, even though one of the contenders is getting closer. Indeed, while I have enjoyed pointing out the flaws in the eight statements of the politicized Indian academic establishment and its American amplifiers, I cannot rule out the possibility that the theory which they are defending may still have its merits. Edwin Bryant also notes that Elst's model is a theoretical exercise. A purely theoretical linguistic exercise, as an experiment to determine whether India can definitively be excluded as a possible homeland. If it cannot, then this further problematizes the possibility of a homeland ever being established anywhere on linguistic grounds. And in Indo-Aryan controversy Bryant notes, Elst, perhaps more in a mood of devil's advocacy, toys with the evidence to show how it can be reconfigured, and to claim that no linguistic evidence has yet been produced to exclude India as a homeland that cannot be reconfigured to promote it as such. Topic. The emerging alternative Konrad Elst summarizes, the emerging alternative to the Aryan invasion theory, as follows. During the 6th millennium BC Proto-Indo-Europeans lived in the Punjab region of northern India. As the result of demographic expansion, they spread into Bactria as the Camboyas. The Paradas moved further and inhabited the Caspian coast and much of Central Asia while the Chinas moved northwards and inhabited the Tarim Basin in northwestern China, forming the Tocharian group of IE speakers. These groups were Proto-Anatolian and inhabited that region by 2000 BC. These people took the oldest form of the Proto-Indo-European language with them and, while interacting with people of the Anatolian and Balkan region, transformed it into a separate dialect. While inhabiting Central Asia they discovered the uses of the horse, which they later sent back to the Urheimat. Later on during their history, they went on to occupy Western Europe and thus spread the Indo-European languages to that region. During the 4th millennium BC, civilization in India started evolving into what became the urban Indus Valley Civilization. During this time, the Pai languages evolved to Proto-Indo-Iranian. Some time during this period, the Indo-Iranians began to separate as the result of internal rivalry and conflict, with the Iranians expanding westwards towards Mesopotamia and Persia, these possibly were the Pallavas. They also expanded into parts of Central Asia. By the end of this migration, India was left with the Proto-Indo-Aryans. At the end of the mature Harappan period, the Sarasvati River began drying up and the remainder of the Indo-Aryans split into separate groups. Some travelled westwards and established themselves as rulers of the Hurrian Mitanni kingdom by around 1500 BC see Indo-Aryan superstrate in Mitanni. Others travelled eastwards and inhabited the Gangetic Basin while others travelled southwards and interacted with the Dravidian people. David Frawley. In books such as The Myth of the Aryan Invasion of India and In Search of the Cradle of Civilization, Frawley criticizes the 19th-century racial interpretations of Indian prehistory, such as the theory of a conflict between invading Caucasoid Aryans and Dravidians. In the book In Search of the Cradle of Civilization 1995, Frawley along with Georg Feuerstein and Subhash Kak has rejected the Aryan invasion theory and supported the out-of-India theory. Bryant commented that Frawley's historical work is more successful in the popular arena, to which it is directed and where its impact is by no means insignificant, rather than in academic study, and that Frawley is committed to channeling a symbolic spiritual paradigm through a critical empirico rational one. Pseudo archaeologist Graham Hancock 2002 quotes Frawley's historical work extensively for the proposal of highly evolved ancient civilizations prior to our current estimate of history, including in India. Kreisberg refers to Frawley's The Vedic Literature and Its Many Secrets. Topic. Political significance The Aryan Invasion Theory plays an important role in Hindu nationalism, which favors the idea of indigenous Aryanism. It has to be understood to the background of colonialism, and the task of nation-building in India. <inaudible> <inaudible> Colonial India 
Curiosity and the colonial requirements of knowledge about the subject people led the officials of the East India Company to explore the history and culture of India in the late 18th century. When similarities between Sanskrit, Greek and Latin were discovered by William Jones, a suggestion of monogenesis single origin was formulated for these languages as well as their speakers. In the latter part of the 19th century, it was thought that language, culture and race were interrelated, and the notion of biological race came to the forefront the Aryan race. The presumed identity of Indo-European language speakers was prominent among such races, which was seen to be further subdivided into European Aryans and Asian Aryans. Each with their own homelands, Max Muller, who translated the Rigveda during 1849–1874, postulated an original homeland for all Aryans in Central Asia, from where a northern branch was believed to have migrated to Europe and a southern branch came to India and Iran. The Aryans were fair-complexioned Indo-European speakers who conquered the dark-skinned Dasas of India. The upper castes, particularly the Brahmins, were thought to be of Aryan descent whereas the lower castes and Dalits untouchables were thought to be the descendants of Dasas. The Aryan theory served to provide the colonized Indians with status and self esteem, making them believe that they are of the same stock as the colonizers, linguistically and racially. However, Christian missionaries such as John Muir and John Wilson drew attention to the plight of lower castes, who they said were oppressed by the upper castes since the Aryan invasions. Jyotiba Fool argued that the Dasas and Sudras were indigenous people and the rightful inheritors of the land, whereas Brahmins were Aryan and alien, the upper castes had their own uses for the Aryan theory. Kashab Chunder Sen saw the English rule in India as a reunion of parted cousins. The nationalist leader Bal Gangadhar Tilak endorsed the antiquity of Rigveda, dating it to 4500 BC. He placed the homeland of the Aryans somewhere close to the North Pole. From there, Aryans were believed to have migrated south in the post-glacial age, branching into a European branch that relapsed into barbarism and an Indian branch that retained the original, superior civilization. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hindu revivalism and nationalism In contrast to the mainstream views, the Hindu revivalist movements denied an external origin to Aryans. Dayananda Saraswati, the founder of the Arya Samaj Society of Aryans, held that Vedas were the source of all knowledge that were revealed to the Aryans. The first man an Aryan, was created in Tibet and, after living there for some time, the Aryans came down and inhabited India, which was devoid of any people earlier. The Theosophical Society held that the Aryans were indigenous to India, but that they were also the progenitors of the European civilization. The society saw a dichotomy between the spiritualism of India and the materialism of Europe. The Hindu nationalists, led by Savarkar and Golwakar, eager to construct a Hindu identity for the nation, held that the original Hindus were the Aryans and that they were indigenous to India. There was no Aryan invasion and no conflict among the people of India. The Aryans spoke Sanskrit and spread the Aryan civilization from India to the West. Lars Martin Fossey notes the political significance of indigenous Aryanism. He notes that, "...indigenous Aryanism," has been adopted by Hindu nationalists as a part of their ideology, which makes it a political matter in addition to a scholarly problem. The proponents of indigenous Aryanism necessarily engage in, "...moral disqualification," of Western Indology, which is a recurrent theme in much of the indigenous literature. The same rhetoric is being used in indigenous literature and the Hindu nationalist publications like The Organizer, Witzel traces the, "...indigenous Aryan." idea to the writings of Savarkar and Golwakar. Golwakar denied any immigration of Aryans to the subcontinent, stressing that all Hindus have always been children of the soil, a notion which according to Witzel is reminiscent of the blood and soil of contemporary fascism. Since these ideas emerged on the brink of the internationalist and socially oriented Nehru Gandhi government, they lay dormant for several decades, and only rose to prominence in the 1980s. Burgunder likewise identifies Golwakar as the originator of the indigenous Aryans notion, and Gol's voice of India as the instrument of its rise to notability. The Aryan migration theory at first played no particular argumentative role in Hindu nationalism. 
This impression of indifference changed, however, with Madhav Sadashiv Golwakar (1906–1973), who from 1940 until his death was leader of the extremist paramilitary organization the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh (RSS). In contrast to many other of their openly offensive teachings, the Hindu nationalists did not seek to keep the question of the Aryan migration out of public discourses or to modify it. Rather, efforts were made to help the theory of the indigenousness of the Hindus achieve public recognition. For this the initiative of the publisher Sita Ram Goel b. 1921 was decisive. Goel may be considered one of the most radical, but at the same time also one of the most intellectual, of the Hindu nationalist ideologues. Since 1981 Goel has run a publishing house named Voice of India that is one of the few which publishes Hindu nationalist literature in English which at the same time makes a scientific claim. Although no official connections exist, the books of Voice of India which are of outstanding typographical quality and are sold at a subsidized price—are widespread among the ranks of the leaders of the Sangh Parivar. The increasing political influence of Hindu nationalism in the 1990s resulted in attempts to revise the Aryan migration theory also becoming known to the academic public. Repercussions of the disagreements about Aryan origins have reached Californian courts with the Californian Hindu textbook case, where according to the Times of India historian and president of the Indian History Congress, Dwajendra Narayan Jha in a crucial affidavit to the Superior Court of California. G. Iving a hint of the Aryan origin debate in India, asked the court not to fall for the indigenous Aryan claim since it has led to demonization of Muslims and Christians as foreigners and to the near denial of the contributions of non-Hindus to Indian culture. Criticism Michael Witzel has severely criticized the indigenous Aryans position. The revisionist project certainly is not guided by the principles of critical theory but takes, time and again, recourse to pre-enlightenment beliefs in the authority of traditional religious texts such as the Puranas. In the end, it belongs, as has been pointed out earlier, to a different discourse than that of historical and critical scholarship. In other words, it continues the writing of religious literature, under a contemporary, outwardly scientific guise. The revisionist and autochthonous project, then, should not be regarded as scholarly in the usual post Enlightenment sense of the word, but as an apologetic, ultimately religious undertaking aiming at proving the truth of traditional texts and beliefs. Worse, it is, in many cases, not even scholastic scholarship at all but a political undertaking aiming at rewriting history out of national pride or for the purpose of nation building. In her review of Bryant's The Indo-Aryan Controversy, which includes chapters by Elst and other indigenists, Stephanie Jameson comments The parallels between the intelligent design issue and the Indo-Aryan controversy are distressingly close. The Indo-Aryan controversy is a manufactured one with a non-scholarly agenda, and the tactics of its manufacturers are very close to those of the ID proponents mentioned above. However unwittingly and however high their aims, the two editors have sought to put a gloss of intellectual legitimacy, with a sense that real scientific questions are being debated, on what is essentially a religio-nationalistic attack on a scholarly consensus. Sudeshna Guha, in her review of the Indo-Aryan controversy, notes that the book has serious methodological shortcomings, by not asking the question what exactly constitutes historical evidence. This makes the fair and adequate representation of the differences of opinion," problematic, since it neglects the extent to which unscholarly opportunism has motivated the rebirth of this genre of scholarship. Guha Bryant's call for accepting the valid problems that are pointed out on both sides, p. 500, holds intellectual value only if distinctions are strictly maintained between research that promotes scholarship, and that which does not. Bryant and Patton gloss over the relevance of such distinctions for sustaining the academic nature of the Indo-Aryan debate, although the importance of distinguishing the scholarly from the unscholarly is rather well enunciated through the essays of Michael Witzel and Lars Martin Fossey. According to Bryant, OIT proponents tend to be linguistic dilettantes who either ignore the linguistic evidence completely, dismiss it as highly speculative and inconclusive, or attempt to tackle it with hopelessly inadequate qualifications. This attitude and neglect significantly minimizes the value of most OIT publications. Fossey notes crucial theoretical and methodological shortcomings in the indigenous literature. 
Analyzing the works of Sethna, Bhagwan Singh, Navaratna and Talajari, he notes that they mostly quote English literature, which is not fully explored, and omitting German and French Indology. It makes their works in various degrees underinformed, resulting in a critique that is largely neglected by Western scholars because it is regarded as incompetent. Topic see also topic Notes topic References topic Sources topic Printed sources topic Web sources topic Further reading Overview When Bryant, a cultural historian, has given an overview of the various indigenous positions in his PhD thesis and two subsequent publications, Bryant, Edwin The Indigenous Aryan Debate thesis. Columbia University. Bryant, Edwin 2001, The Quest for the Origins of Vedic Culture, The Indo-Aryan Migration Debate, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0-19-513777-9 Bryant, Edwin F., Patton, Laurie L. 2005, the Indo-Aryan Controversy. Evidence and Interference in Indian History, Routledgeth Indigenous Aryan Debate and the Quest for the Origins of Vedic Culture are reports of his fieldwork, primarily interviews with Indian researchers, on the reception of the Indo-Aryan Migration Theory in India. The Indo-Aryan Controversy is a bundle of papers by various indigenists, including Konrad Elst, but also a paper by Michael Witzel. Another overview has been given by Thomas Troutman, Troutman, Thomas 2005, The Aryan Debate, Oxford University Press Troutman, Thomas 2006, Aryans and British India, Yoda Press, ISBN 9788190227000 216 Literature by Indigenous Aryans Proponents Elst, Conrad 1999, Update on the Aryan Invasion Debate, New Delhi, Aditya Prakashan, ISBN 818 8647177-4 Kazanis, Nicholas 2002, Indigenous Indo-Aryans and the Rigveda, Journal of Indo-European Studies, 30-275-334 Georg Feuerstein, Subhash Kak, David Frawley, In Search of the Cradle of Civilization, New Light on Ancient India Quest Books Ill, October, 1995. ISBN 0-8356-0720-8 Lal, B.B. The Sarasvati Flows on, The Continuity of Indian Culture, Aryan Books International, ISBN 81-7305-202-6. Lal, B.B. The Rigvedic People, Invaders? Immigrants, or Indigenous? See also Konrad Elst, Book Review. The Rig Vedic people were indigenous to India, not invaders Mukhyananda 1997, Vedanta, in the context of modern science, a comparative study, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, ASIN, B0000 CPAAFNS Rajaram, The Politics of History, Aryan Invasion Theory and the Subversion of Scholarship New Delhi, Voice of India, 1995. ISBN 81 8599028 x Talajeri, S. G., The Rigveda, A Historical Analysis, Aditya Prakashan, New Delhi in 2000 ISBN 81-7742-010-0-1 Danino, Michel 2009, A Brief Note on the Aryan Invasion Theory PDF, Pragati Quarterly Research Journal April-June 2009 Matwani, Jagat 2011, None But India Bharat, The Cradle of Aryans, Sanskrit, Vedas, and Swastika, Aryan Invasion of India and i.e. Family of Languages are examined and rebutted. I. Universabharat Frawley, David. 1993, Gods, Sages and Kings Vedic Secrets of Ancient Civilization, Mudalal Banarsidas Publ. Criticism Witzel, Michael. 2001. Autochthonous Aryans? The Evidence from Old Indian and Iranian Texts. PDF, Electronic Journal of Vedic Studies, 7 3, 1 115. Shireen Ratnagar 2008, The Aryan Homeland Debate in India, in Philip L. Cole, Mara Kazelsky, Nachman Ben Yehuda. Selective Remembrances, Archaeology in the Construction, Commemoration, and Consecration of National Pasts. pp. 349-378 Siraj Bond 2002, Aryanization of the Indus Civilization. In Panikar, K. N., Byers, T. J. and Patnaik, U. E. D.'s, The Making of History, pp. 41-55, Othergeichard, Sylvie 2010, The Construction of History and Nationalism in India, Textbooks, Controversies and Politics, Routledge Troutman, Thomas 2006, Aryans and British India, Yoda Press Topic. External links 
Indigenesalst, Konrad, Update on the Aryan Invasion Theory, K. Elst's online book, articles, book reviews Kazanis, Nicholas Homepage Frawley, David, The Myth of the Aryan Invasion. The Aryans by S. Srikanda Sastri Institutes and other website Syndic Studies Foundation A Tribute to Hinduism, Compilation Hindu Wisdom, Aryan Invasion Theory Pragatya, Magazine of Indic Ideas and Culture Chronology of Bharathindu Timeline Chronological Chart of the History of Bharatvarsh Since Its Origination Royal Chronology and History of India Bharat. Bharatiya Timeline Reclaiming the Chronology of Bharatvam The History of Bharata or India According to Indian Astronomer Bharata Warindic Studies Foundation, Dating the Kurukshetra War Dr. P. V. Vartak, The Scientific Dating of the Mahabharat War Neil Donald Walsh, Astronomical Proof of the Mahabharata War and Sri Krishna, Part 1 The Vedic Foundation, Mahabharat 3139 BC Critics Thapar, Romila, The Aryan Question Revisited 1999. Witzel, Michael, The Home of the Aryans Witzel, Horseplay at Harappa, Harvard University a Tale of Two Horses, Frontline, 11-24 November 2000. The Hindutva Movement and Reinventing of History, Fosa by Amartya Sen Aravanutala, Politicizing the Past, Depictions of Indo-Aryans in Indian Textbooks from 1998-2007 Academic Discussions Linda Hess, The Indigenous Aryan Discussion on Riza L, The Complete Text to October 28, 96 Thomas Troutman 2005, The Aryan Debate, Introduction. Aryan Invasion Theory Debunked. Aryan Invasion Theory, The Politics Part 1, The Genetics Part 2, Other Debunking Evidences Part 3, Genetics Revisited Aryan Invasion Theory, Debunking the Myth There is genetic evidence against the Aryan Invasion Theory Myth. We were always there. The Aryan Invasion Myth, How 21st Century Science Debunks 19th Century Indology. <laughs>